Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here. Uh, as you may recall, all of these beautiful people are from Youth and Consequences, and we're joined by Jason Ivaldi, our creator and writer. Um, we're an Emmy-nominated show. We didn't win, but we're Emmy-nominated. Um, wanted to go ahead and read the second season pilot for all of you who have seen the first season and we're clamoring for more. Um, so let's just go around and everybody can introduce themselves and the character you're playing. Um, I'm Anna and I play Farah. I'm Savannah and I play Stacy. I'm Katie Cerise and I play Sarah Healy. What's up? I'm Mike Gray and I I'm play Ilo. I'm hey, I'm Kara Royster. Oh, sorry. I'm Kara <laughs> Royster and I play Jane with a Y. I'm Piper Kurt I play Grace. <laughs> I'm Sophie Reynolds and I play Plain Jane. I'm Austin Grant, I play Trip. I'm Moses Storm, I play Hook. I'm Sean Grandillo and I play Colin Cower. And we have the wonderful Carly Houston of reading our narrator in action. Thank you, Carly, you have to say the most words. No um, problem. <laughs> all right, and then Jason, did you wanna say anything before we get into your baby? No, I just think it would be good to just know where we left off. So last season when we left off, Farah hit her rock bottom. She admitted to um, posting the trip pictures, which she actually did not do. She did that to save Cower, and everybody pretty much hates her. And Grace is queen of the school. All right, so Youth in Consequences, episode 201, Disgraced, written by Jason Baldi. Exterior of Central Rochester High School in the morning. The electric sign out front reads, spring break over, schools back in session. Students file into the school. A tracking shot of a girl from behind. She has long black hair and amazing style. She carries what looks like a large trumpet case. From our girl's POV, students wave as she ascends the stairs leading to the front doors of the school. Everyone acknowledges her presence. This must be Farah. Inside, more love for Farah as she confidently strides down the hall with the large case in her hand. The band, the stoners, the skate rats all wave as she passes. It would be a crime against popularity not to. In the cafeteria, close on the case in her hand, the crowd parts just enough to see her destination ahead. Stacy and Plain Jane look up from the old lunch table. Farrah walks straight for them, throws down the case and pops open the brass clasps, reveal that it's Grace, not Farrah, and she's the new queen bee. She flips the case open like Travolta in Pulp Fiction. Let's play some Mahjong, bitches. We go to the main titles, and then we are back in the cafeteria. Close on a domino keychain and cell phone on a lunch table. Revealed the real Farah playing solitaire at a table far from her old beehive. She listens to French music in her earbuds as she icily sneaks a peek at Grace teaching Mahjong. And these are the bamboo tiles, hence the pics of bamboo. Although the one of bamboo has no bamboo, just a bird, which makes no sense. Jane with a Y and Hurley pass the table with their lunches. You guys want to learn to play? I have to do the trig homework I skipped because of my new job. What about you, Sarah? Uh, it's way better than bridge. I think I'm done with strategy games for a bit. Farah, headphones still in, watches Jane with a Y and Hurley finish the conversation with a laugh and move on. Farah, I forgot you even had a first name. It's different, but I kind of like it. Hook pulls the earbuds from Farah's ears. Now she's playing geriatric games at your old table. How can you just sit there while she blatantly bites off your fairness? Most countries don't even recognize three-person mahjong as a thing. What happened to imitation being the sincerest form of flattery? You're not even a little flattered by anything of her. Farrah looks at Grace's jacket. It's the same exact style as Farrah's iconic yellow jacket from last season, only in a different color. That's not entirely true. I'm kind of digging my jacket in white. I'm sure she bought that with the money she's skimming off the student council events. You don't know she's doing that. She's selling spring fling tickets for 30 bucks each. Last year, they were 15. And you know that her dreamers campaign was just a stunt to make her look like a good person. What do you want me to do? Run over and rip a vein out of her neck? That'd be a good start. I've been watching you watch her steal your identity for five months. Well, then stop watching me. You plucked Grace Ho out of obscurity, and to thank you, she copied everything you did and stole your friends. Bringing that tile game in is just rubbing it in your crawl at this point. My crawl is fine. Sometimes a mahjong game is just a mahjong game. She hooked up with your homecoming date at homecoming. Grace has the entire school thinking she's some kind of do-gooder hero. All I have is the guy who was arrested for dealing drugs. So go get your girls back. Just don't do nothing. Not gonna be that easy. I assume you heard that she's what she's doing with your handicapped bathroom. Farrah looks at him. What? He hands her a flyer. 
interior hallway later. She, Farrah holds the flyer as she walks down the hall. Nobody says hi as she passes, not even the people who she helped last year. Ilo and Trip walk right past her. Dupankar smiles as he pass, or smirks as he passes. I remember hearing my dad tell his clients who were having a PR crisis. If you are the eye of the storm, you either have to wait until it clears. Up ahead, Cower rummages through his locker. Or hope a tornado comes along and knocks your storm out of the headlines. Farrah gets to her locker. Cower senses that she's there and quickens his pace to get away as soon as possible. Unfortunately, knifing the crotch at homecoming annihilated the headlines around here. No more gossip, no more scandals. She holds up the flyer and goes to say something to him, but he shuts his locker and walks away. Just five months of silence. She puts her lunch container away and slams her locker. Which means, if I want to change what's happening right now, I have to make my own, my own tornado. Farrah walks away with purpose, away from her locker. Woogie wheels out of the bathroom, nearly running into Grace, as she tapes a sign to the door that reads, Future Home of the Honors Students Lounge. I tried to fight Principal Blythe on it, but you know how people are when they start a job with power. Actually, I don't know. They need to make everything their own. Like the way Trump overturned everything Obama. <laughs> Blythe said there simply isn't enough handicapped traffic to warrant a bathroom here. I know how hard this must be for you. The fact is, I just don't have the juice to change it. But I do have the power as the voice of the student body to make sure the school hangs more visible signs in front of the handicap stalls in the regular bathrooms. Thanks. I'm sure that'll stop the regular kids from using the stall. Uh, I, I didn't mean it like that. On the plus side, if you keep your grades up, you can use the honors lounge anytime you want. As Woogie wheels away, Stacy shows up with more signs. How did that go? I was really nice about it. Give me a minute. Grace heads into the handicapped bathroom. The door shuts. Down the hall, Farrah comes towards Woogie. Woogie goes to say something, but Farrah flashes her copy of the sign and continues toward the bathroom. Farrah passes Stacy without making eye contact and heads into the bathroom. Stacy's mouth gapes open. Oh, shit. In the bathroom, Grace applies mascara in the mirror when she hears the door. Sorry, give me a sec. By all means, take your time. Farrah. So now you're punishing disabled kids out of spite? Wow. You have an insane ego to think this is about you. Do I? You know, because it, it feels kind of spidey. If you were capable of seeing beyond yourself, you'd understand that rewarding kids who make honor roll is an incentive to get better grades. And if the school gets a higher academic ranking, it looks better on all of our college apps. Oh, it's for the good of the school. And here I was thinking you just wanted the lounge because I forced you into the bathroom. You didn't force me into anything other than these ugly tile choices. I can't even imagine the gameplay it took for you to convince Blythe that he wanted something this elitist in his school. Elitist? Okay, grades are just as important to principals as they are to students. Maybe more. Numbers don't lie. Only four kids actually need this bathroom while hundreds of kids could use the lounge. It's hard to believe you were just some latch-hooking blogger at the beginning of this year. I was never just any one thing. We're all a lot of things. Farrah reaches into her bag, digging for something. Grace nervously stares at Farrah's hand as she fishes. You just better hope that you're really good at all of them. Because when you're juggling chainsaws, you can't lose track of even one for a split second. Farrah pulls out a lipstick. Grace sighs in relief. And if you do, you know what happens. That sounds like a threat. We hear what we want to hear. Farrah tosses her lipstick in her bag, heads to the exit. Oh, and I am going to get this bathroom back. And that is a threat. Grace follows her toward the door. Don't challenge me, Farah. I can make things worse for you. Farah doesn't even turn around. She swings open the door to the hallway and finds Stacy right there trying to listen. Stacy steps to the side to let her pass. She's putting her face on. It could take a while. Farah walks on. Interior diner night. The door opens and Stacy enters. We follow her as she approaches a table. Just so you know, Grace is pissed. Reveal Farah at the booth. Farah shrugs. Doesn't care. She came out of that bathroom rattled as hell. Rattled enough to do something about it? So far, she's giving me nothing, but I'm watching. I've got your back. You think she's keeping quiet because she knows we talk? No, I'm pretty good at playing both sides. I saw her kissing up to Hurley and why. Is she getting anywhere with them? Those two are like, I don't know, their own thing right now. I think some of it might be Hurley not wanting to join a team with me on it because of, you know, what happened with Ilo. You know about that? Yeah. 
he told me. I mean, we're past it now. He's not all bad, you know? You realize if you just let him win that election, none of this would have happened? Uh, yeah, lesson learned. Don't rig an election with the devil. <sighs> Too bad impeachment doesn't work in student council or anywhere. <laughs> so, what do you think Grace's next move is going to be? Next morning, in the parking lot, a car crushes the cone that once marked Farrah's parking spot. Grace gets out of the driver's seat with a coffee. Stacy and Plain Jane get out with coffees as well. Across the lot, Farrah is getting her books out of her trunk. She can see the coffee clutch from her vantage point. You know, Plain still thinks we're bumping pretties. Too bad she's so insecure. I really liked her. Genius move by Grace to prey on it, though. Plain was, a, was easy to flip. I tried to warn you about Grace. Yeah, you were right. I saw a lamb. You saw the wolf. Should have known the second she said she loved to play Dominion. All cells sound in unison, including hooks and pharaohs. Strange. Farrah looks at her phone. Her face drops. The crotch, back under new management, poses the question, why wasn't bully Farrah suspended? There's a photo of Farrah from Homecoming under the headline. Farrah glares at Grace, who is the only person whose head is not in her phone, as she calmly walks toward the building while sipping a coffee. Grace peeks over at Farrah, adding a happy wave and smile in Farrah's direction. Game on. Later in the hallway, Farrah hurries down the hallway with her lunch in hand. Heads turn and people whisper as she passes. Clearly the crotch post has, pe has people talking. She swings open the theater door and heads up to the balcony. Farrah takes a seat a few rows up and over from where Cower is eating. She isn't all that close to him, but near enough for him to see her and make him uneasy and suspicious. He pretends not to care that she's there and eats quietly. But now and again, he sneaks a peek at her. Finally. I didn't post that bully thing. I know you didn't. I really didn't post it. I believed you the first time. I know the crotch is the last thing you'd be involved in after your mom left our school because of it. No, not because of it, because of us. We uncovered a scandal involving her and then re-covered it up. She had no choice but to ask to be reassigned. With a Y, to Pankar, too many people knew what she did. I have no words that can make any of it better. What happened eats at me every day. And not just because the school lost a great principal. Well, if you're not here to accuse me of the post, why are you here? Because after five months of nothingness, the crotch is awake and getting attention. And you of all people know what a powerful position it is to be able to shape the story being told out there. Okay, that's a rousing speech and all, but would you really care this much if the story wasn't Farrah shaped? Grace posted it. She clearly thinks that the best way to keep me from getting up is to cut out my legs before I stand. Okay, I'm not getting sucked back into the Farrah vortex. I'm sorry. I get that you don't want to do this with me or, or even talk to me. I've been dealing with your silence for five months now, but can you just answer one question for me? Are you the only person with a copy of the crotch drive? The one with the Chadwick tapes and all? Yes. Whoever helped Grace become the crotch only hacked into the actual site. The drive is still locked in the safe in my trailer. you have any idea who that could be? You said one question. Okay, I answered it. Which doesn't equate to us being cool now, by the way. We're not. Well, thanks for the words then. Farrah packs up her stuff and heads out of the balcony. As she disappears down the stairs, he peeks up to watch her go. Later in the computer lab, class is full of students quietly using the computers. Farrah researches state laws about handicapped bathrooms. The teacher's cell phone rings and she answers. Okay, will do. Farrah Cutney, you're wanted in the principal's office. Every student in the class looks up. They all think this is the call that gets her expelled. Farrah thinks so too. She clicks off her search, gathers her stuff, and walks out with all eyes on her. In the hallway, Farrah does a dead man walking down the hall. The principal didn't call you. I did. Sorry if you thought this was the call that got you expelled. I just wanted to get you alone. I didn't make you squirm a bit. I deserve probably more than a bit. Look, I'm one of the few people who knows that you didn't post those photos of Trip. I know that you're not bully Farrah and that the crotch is shafting you, so. And while I... I haven't forgiven you for hiding the Chadwick upskirts. I believe that you thought you were doing the right thing at the time. My biggest mistake was in not recognizing that you're strong enough to handle anything. Look, if we're going to hit the back arrow on us, you need to understand one thing. No more secrets. I totally get it. Jane opens her arms. Farrah goes in for a hug. <laughs> So, I'm betting you already know who is pulling the levers of the great and powerful crotch. 
Oh, it turns out we created a very popular monster. Mm, so it is, Grace. Wait, how do you think that she hacked into the crotch? Computer lab, Depankar's office. Dip has his head down in a computer, but he hears the door open. Without looking up, he checks his watch. It's been almost six hours since that post hit. The old fair would have barged in here in five minutes. Looks like someone lost a step. You know why I'm here? Then I won't have to stand in the fortress of desperation for very long. Ah, I don't need you to, I don't need to tell you which of us looks more desperate right now. Here's the thing, Dip. I realize that however you answer me isn't necessarily the truth, but I still need to hear it from your mouth so that if I find out you're lying, I'll know that our deal is broken. I don't need to lie. Our deal was for me to give the crotch back to you and Cower, which I did. You're the one who torpedoed it from there, not me. Still, the crotch is back and you're the only person who- I kept my end of the bargain. And as far as that's concerned, you and I are still at a stalemate. I have the dirt on Cower and his mom. You have the sad stuff, neither of which have come to light. I'm not accusing you of being the crotch, but you helped Grace. Oh, oh. I never said the crotch is Grace or not Grace. I already know it's Grace. Whoever it may be. Just because I give somebody the keys to the car doesn't mean I'm driving. Because you can't reach the pedals. Farrah no. walks out the door. After school, the halls are empty except for Grace and Plain Jane hanging a sign with an anti-bullying message on it. Principal, bleh, Principal Blythe walks out of his office with his briefcase, heading home for the day. Hello, Grace. Hello. Jane. Jane. I'll remember that next time. Uh, Grace. Will you step into my office for a minute? In the office, Blythe puts his briefcase down. Grab a seat. In a school as large as ours, things run smoother when the principal and the student council president are on the same team. I did, did I do something that made you think we're not on the same team? Making waves in my hallway because of a crotch post does not seem like teamwork to me. You know about the crotch post? I, you really do have your finger on the pulse of the school. Yeah, don't do that. You don't need to flatter me. Well, I, um... Of course I am aware of the crotch, but what I don't have to do is react to its posts. I will not expel a student because some anonymous student wants me to. And you hanging a sign in my hallway that brings attention to the situation only makes my job harder. I am so sorry. I didn't realize it would put extra pressure on you. Consider the sign removed. <laughs> Today, please. Um, I hope you don't think this is out of line, but can I just say one last thing before I go? Quickly. The only reason I was hanging that sign is because the crotch is kind of the voice of the students. And if everyone's talking about bullying, then as their president, I felt a responsibility to react to their concern. It was by no means meant to undermine your authority. It's very admirable of you to use the power of the student council the way it was originally intended. And I hear you about the voice of the students. It's important to me to listen to that as well. I mean, that being said, the next time something like this happens, make an appointment with my office to come see me. For sure, Dr. Blythe, I will always be on the same team. Go Tigers. <laughs> yes, go Tigers. Grace walks out. In the hallway, Plane is waiting for her. We have to lose the signs. Damn. Don't worry about it. Turns out we didn't really need the signs to put the pressure on him. I just did. You are good. In another part of the hallway, one floor up at the same time, Ferris slowly walks from one end of the hall to the other. She has a timer in her hand. She stops near the handicap bathroom and records her time in a notebook. She about faces and starts the timer again. Ilo turns the corner with Trip and the two see Ferris slowly walking. What is she doing? Bro, the girl's lost it. That's nothing but karma running all up over her for that shit she pulled on you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Karma. Later in the afternoon at Cower's trailer, Cower nervously paces. He keeps looking out the window at Farah sitting on the ground by the front door to his house. Finally, Principal Cower pulls up the driveway. She sees a, con a contrite Farah stand up in anticipation of her arrival. I assume you're waiting for me? I am. I... I've been wanting to come by for a long time, but I could never come up with the words that would make any of it better. It took me five months to realize that I just can't make what I did to you sound even a little okay. Eric, you don't have to explain yourself. Please. Instead of trying to justify what I did, I just wanted to say that I am sorry for 
so much. But most of all, I'm sorry I lied to your face. You were always so good to me, and I. No, Colin told me how everything played out with trip, with the trip post. Everything. Well, maybe not everything, but enough to make me understand why you took Mike at homecoming. You did? I know the two of you are pretty far down the road of never talking again, but he wanted to make sure that I knew that you were trying to do the right thing that night. I really thought I was. Taking the fall for Trip was both brutal and, and elegant. And if you're the kind of person who would do that for a classmate, then, then I have to believe that your lies to my face had to have something you know, else behind them too. That's what I thought. I never imagined it would end like it did. It kills me that you left your job because of me. Not because of you. I asked to be reassigned because I made an error in judgment. Spying on students was not exactly by the book. You were just trying to protect us. Trip, you told somewhere deep down in me. I, I knew you had something to do with the crotch, but accepting it meant accepting that my son did too, and I, I didn't want to deal with that. I've dealt with it now. It took some time, but he and I have moved past it. You should too. Thank you for saying that. If only your son was as forgiving as you. <laughs> yeah, he's a tough one. Good luck. Oh, wait, uh, one thing. Hypothetically, if in your school a disabled student took this long just to get to a bathroom. We see Cower in the trailer window watching Farah and his mother working closely together. It softens him. That night in Farah's bedroom, uh, she's on her bed, or sorry, on her bed is an open notebook full of recorded times with column headers like A hall, B hall, C hall, etc. Farah listens to French music as she waits for her printer to finish. She pulls a printout off the printer and then with a red sharpie emphatically circles a number at the bottom, 26.15 hours. She puts the printout in a large blue envelope. Next morning in the quad, Hurley can't believe what Jane with a Y is telling her. I can't believe you let, you let her off the hook? I didn't let her off the hook. I realized that her lies to me didn't add up to five months of hate. I'm sorry, but lies don't equal friendship. Not ever. Yeah, but there's sort of a gray area. No, she doesn't get to be a gray area. No friend should get that kind of free pass. Look, bottom line, she didn't trust me enough to let me inside. So instead, she, she piled secrets on top of lies until they all came crashing down on her. She thought she was protecting us. Us? No, no, she only thinks about herself. And you're getting played if you let her back into your life because she will do it again. Hurley walks away. Later in the cafeteria, Farrah watches Grace rope in a passing, uh, sorry, rope in a pa uh, passing de Pankar to play Mahjong with the girls. Looks like she's got her fourth. Yep, she's got a full game now. Dips a douche. Cell phones ring across the cafeteria. A new post from the crotch goes live. The headline is a blatant escalation of pressure on the principal to move on expelling bully Farah. Principal Cower didn't move, will you? This time there is a photo of Dr. Blythe under the headline. Farah packs up her stuff and heads to the door. Hook tries to stop her from walking out. As she passes Tripp and Ilo's table, Tripp watches Farah go. Minutes later, alone in the theater, Cower looks at, at the post. He hears the door open and quickly lowers his phone. As it, as he expected, Farrah walks in. Before he can say a word... Grace is working hard to get me expelled. Not to mention the fact that she's feeding the whole school that I'm a bully. So before you go all beauty and the beast and demand that I leave your creepy castle up here, you should know that I'm not up here to ask you for your help or talk about our non-existent friendship. I'm just here because I really need a place to eat alone without everyone staring and judging me. I get it. Carrot takes a bite of his food. Farrah does, as well. Farrah does as well. The two eat in the silence two. for a few moments. Then Cower hits something on his phone. A song comes on. The two don't talk, but the music gives us the feeling that fences are mending. Back in the cafeteria, the bell rings. Everyone stands up to leave. Jane, with a Y, leans against the window, watching the boys at the jock table getting up to go. She hurries over and times it perfectly to catch Trip all alone. You must be happy. With what? Bully Pharaoh. There's a shot she's going down for what she did to you. I wouldn't say that I'd be happy about that. Well, she made it in front of the whole school that she posted fake pics of you in drag. The crotch putting a target on her is deserved. But still, I mean, getting expelled could affect her entire life. 
Well, if you're not still fuming mad at her, you're either way too forgiving or there's something more to the story I don't know. <laughs> anyway, gotta go. Can't be late for physics. She hurries off, leaving Tripp to his thoughts. In the superintendent's kitchen after school, Farah is with Stacy talking to Superintendent Moorhead. The blue envelope is on the counter as Farah explains her findings on the printout. I paced it out myself. The average wheelchair-bound student will lose five minutes of class time per day if we take away that one centrally located handicapped bathroom. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but over the course of a year, that's like 15 hours in the hallway rather than in a classroom. This is very enlightening. Let me take a closer look at the numbers. That's all we ask. Wow, good job, girls. I'd like to see you two together again. As Farah heads out, Farah, she stops. Superintendent Moorhead looks behind her to make sure Stacy isn't in the foyer also. It's been a long time since you've been in this house. Yeah, I remember the last time. I would prefer not to relive it. I get it, but I did want to say something that I was too mad to say that day. Okay. I'm truly sorry for what happened to you because of, well, you know. You don't have to apologize. I do. I do. Because I was supposed to be the grown-up, and in that moment with you in the kitchen, I wasn't. Well, I threatened you. Yes, but it was cavalier of me to dismiss the feelings behind your threat. And for that, I'm not just sorry. I'm ashamed. It's okay. I've come to terms with all of it. My dad included. I guess all this time alone gave me some space to do some growing up. Well, I'm just glad you're back in Stacy's life. And mine. She smiles and heads out. The next morning in the parking lot, Grace, Plain, and Stacy walk toward the building together. They laugh and sip coffee, not a care in the world. Across the lot, Farrah gets out of her car. She looks up and sees some girls staring at her, a harsh reminder that she is still persona non grata at CRHS. She couldn't feel more alone when from behind she hears. Hey, bully. It's Hook. I'm sure the ex-dealer isn't the ideal guy for you to walk in with to rehab your image, but... Please walk with me. You know, as a general rule, I prefer my bullies to be a little more old-fashioned. You know, ratty news cap, bully henchmen that laugh when they steal your lunch money. Bullying was so much more innocent back in the day. Right? Nobody, nobody gives wedgies anymore. But that's bullying. At the same time, in the principal's office, Principal Blythe stares at the latest crotch post about Bully Farah. He sighs, already fed up with the new crotch. He angrily clicks off the screen. An elderly assistant, Mrs. Lansdowne, interrupts, holding the blue envelope. Uh, Superintendent Moorhead sent this packet over. Uh, just leave it there. She puts the envelope down on Blythe's desk. Now a um, homeroom montage. All of our characters are in their respective homerooms listening to the morning announcements. Let's not forget to pick up the Spring Fling tickets on sale now for $30. Get them early because there'll be 40 at the door. And in sports, the Ladies Tigers softball team opened the season by beating Mountain View 16 to 12. The boys lacrosse team opens their season at home today at 3.30. Come out and support the team. But before we sign off, Dr. Blythe has a few words. Oh, here we go. As principal, I have a responsibility to monitor the safety of my school be it physical or something else. And we have a zero tolerance for bullying when it comes to bullying here. Uh, and while I abhor the existence of the crotch and will soon make it disappear completely, I recognize that at times it does represent the voice of the students here at Central Rochester. I'm not going to pretend that I know what really happened before I arrived at this school. But one of our own came into my office last night to set me straight on a few things. So I'm going to hand the mic over to him and let him speak. A scared trip walks over to Blythe who hands him the mic. You can feel his anxiety. He has written down something. <clears throat> hey everyone. It's, uh, it's Trip Sanders. I, uh, I wanted to say something. Um, uh, a lot of stuff happened last semester that involved me, some of which didn't go down exactly how we all think it did. Um, when Farrah Cutney took that mic at homecoming, 
It turns out she was just trying to protect me, but I don't need her protection anymore. She said that those photos of me were fake, but they weren't. Look, I, I don't know if she really was the crotch or not, but what I do know is that when she stood up there and said that those photos were fake, that was her jumping on her sword for me. She bore the brunt of those posts so that I can walk among you without judgment. And there are a lot of people out there who are confused about who they are and what they like. And it's nobody's business if they or I want to test out how we feel. <clears throat> I just hope that people understand and treat me like they always have. He hands the mic back to Blythe. Life puts his hand on his shoulder. Trip nods as he holds back from crying. Jane, with a Y, on the other hand, wipes away a tear. So much happens to us so fast. Sometimes it really is like a tornado sweeping through. Hurley is emotional as well. Later in the principal's office, Dr. Blythe opens the blue envelope and pulls out the packet. But I thought I was different than everyone else. I thought I could handle the homecoming storm. Dr. Blythe sits down with the numbers. In the cafeteria, Ferris sits, in the ca uh, sits staring forward. I thought that rebuilding what I tore down wouldn't be as bad as it turned out to be. But then again, I learned that when things are at their bleakest, you can sometimes find shelter in the unlikeliest of places. And that people want to be there for you, even if it takes them a minute or two to get there. We see that Hook and Jane with a Y sit at the table with her. Uh, can I sit with you? They all look up and see Cower with his lunch in hand. Farrah smiles and shifts over. He sits next to her. In the handicap bathroom, Woogie wheels by as Dr. Blythe rips down the sign that says Future Home of Honors Students Lounge and crinkles it up. In the parking lot at the end of the day, as Farrah gets to her car, Grace confronts her. You know the whole school still thinks she posted those pics of Trip to begin with. People believe what they want to believe, but you already know that. The fact that you protected Trip afterwards only makes you slightly less horrible in their eyes. Ooh, slightly less. I'll take it. Oh, it looks like I'm heading for a B in algebra, which means I won't qualify for the honors lounge. Too bad I won't be able to hang out in there with you. Oh wait, isn't the honors lounge dead too? <sighs> I still have control of the voice of the students. If I were you, I'd take it down a notch but you're not me, no matter how hard you try. Farrah shuts the car door on the threat. Grace just stands there and watches her put the car in reverse and pull out. End of episode. Wow. Hey. hey, hey. Guys, it's so good to see you after all these years. Years. It's Hi. been years, everyone. Oh, it's also just nice to see people, but then it's an extra <laughs> bonus when it's people you like. <laughs> I think maybe besides the Rite Aid pharmacist, you guys are the first people I've talked to today. <laughs> Damn. I feel like we were all in Utah yesterday, kind of, yeah. in a way, but also yeah. it feels from a year ago. Also, Ogden kind of thought. felt like a lockdown. I, I was going to say, I think we were already quarantined in Ogden. Yeah. <laughs> right. every day yes. to meet each other. We were prepared the for dog this. Food. <laughs> oh, go God. The dog food factory? <laughs> Couldn't go outside because it was dog food, and then people that probably wanted to murder you. <laughs> 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 Whatever that main street was, it's like, oh, it's just people who can't fight. Fight club? Fighting? Fight club. <laughs> outside oh, of my oh, window. Oh, oh, but no I one could fight. Ah. No one could actually fight. No one could actually get a punch off. People were like throwing out their up, shoulders. Some people ended up on the ground. It was pretty rough. Something While we're like, here, one last thing. Who's up for a little game? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yes. for an ice cream. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did that literally at every turn we possibly could. Yeah. Like anytime yeah. there was like a moment that we could like 
squeeze yeah. in. Because we got like along game. too well. We're like, how do we make this work? Trust with the group. I definitely <laughs> almost kicked Piper out of our apartment once. So. Oh, I'm yeah. See? I remember finding out that I was not the red team or red card, and yeah. you knew everyone, and I was Devastated. not a spy. For each other, I was not, not a spy. Not Someone always had to sing it. Film. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Spanner. This is so sad because, like, I need you guys to play this. I can't <laughs> play this with Kanto. What What was the title of that film that we watched? The The Christmas local <laughs> actors or someone's film? The oh Mormon my- one. Yeah, oh it, he was in the show. I can't remember. <laughs> no. who that the was. coach. What it was, was it? the coach. Where did the oh, coach? The coach, right? Yeah. It didn't- <laughs> Wasn't it was the, coach the, the one who was inappropriate to you, no. Anna? Yes. Yes. I do wish I had seen that. Or can we get the B-roll on that from yeah. you? <laughs> That's got to be fantastic, oh seriously. God. By the way, I'm, I'm wearing this as a tribute to Teen Sheriff. Yeah. It's part of my Teen oh, Sheriff. Oh, I really appreciate that. that. Yes. yes. You look beautiful, Jason. Oh, oh. Look at us. We'll go back. Good. Our paid outing. <laughs> I was so sad because I was in like every scene. So when you guys were like, it's a snow day. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, everyone. <laughs> Anna, we're fighting at the You had both day. I don't know what I was doing, but I was doing something. I had nothing but free time. <laughs> <laughs> like in hindsight, I could have been there for two days. 